giant lens test intro take one. Hey everyone, Chitta Fahadangs here. Welcome to the ultimate on a budget anamorphic lens test. We got a ton of anamorphics to check out, so let's go. ShareGrid made the ultimate anamorphic lens test a couple years back and they used very high quality lenses and the test is an excellent resource to learn more about these optics. Since then, a lot more options have come to the market in more affordable tiers. So honoring the name of the channel, we made this shootout to cover those options. This is a shootout of the most affordable anamorphic lenses out there. We created this as a repeatable scenario. So if the opportunity arises or if more lenses come to the market, we can come back to this place, set all of this up and repeat everything that we did for the first or second round of tests. The only variation at play are the lenses and everything else is locked. The goal is to create a unique resource that is highly repeatable. Surrey came out with their 1.33 lenses in just over a year and they're the most affordable lenses in this shootout. The lenses have a subtle compression, yet they deliver incredibly sharp results. They're limited to mirrorless camera bodies though. The Bazin set was designed for micro four thirds cameras that shoot in four by three aspect ratio. Their 1.8 times squeeze factor is tailored for this format and offer many features of more expensive lenses, but there are some big differences throughout the set. SLR Magic's Cine Anamorphots have been around for a while. These are compatible with PL and EF mounts, but they offer a mild squeeze of 1.33. Or you can go more hardcore with two times squeeze in a micro four thirds mount. Both sets from SLR Magic are fitted with oval inserts. So when shooting wide open, that boosts your oval bouquet. Lomo, these are the oldest ones in the bunch. Vintage Soviet optics these are square front anamorphics, totally redesigned and rebuilt by Van Diemen. They bring classic vintage vibes to the images and are loved by many. Atlas offers a wide range of focal lengths and reliable performance across both A and B sets. These lenses are the most expensive ones in the shootout so far, and they are designed for Super 35 sensors. Rehoused and serviced by Exo Optic, the original Iskarama is the only adapter in this shootout. The Iskarama has a flimsy plastic body, and here we have the MaxiScope rehousing, which adds lots of features to the most expensive adapter out there. We're pairing it with contact size taking lenses for an organic yet clean look. This test would not have been possible if it wasn't for the help of a lot of people. So I wanna start with Jay Holben and Ilya Friedman, who gave me lots of advice before we actually started testing on how to set this up. I also have to thank ShareGrid and Old Fast Glass because I went to them to ask if I could repeat their test and they were great, very helpful in that respect. Langara College gave us the space to shoot. Atlas Lens Co. gave us lenses and gave us the encouragement to go and do it. Exo Optics shipped lenses to get into this test, so thank you very much, Max. Vazen helped us with lenses. Ducal's Lenses in LA sent us our focus and distortion charts. Max Montesi here in Vancouver got us the Z-Cam and it made the whole test possible because we can swap the mounts and keep a consistent sensor. Having one camera for all the rounds of testing is amazing. SLR Magic helped us shimming the Z-Cam and also provided us with lenses, as well as gear-based camera rentals, also in Vancouver, who provided us with some of SLR Magic's lenses. Vistec in Toronto gave us some SLR Magic lenses as well, and Surrey gave us early access to some of the lenses. So it's a lot of people to thank for this test. From the Lenscyclopedia homepage, go to On a Budget Lens Test in the top menu, and that'll bring you to a page with a two by two grid of videos and drop down menus. Here you can choose a big variety of lenses and aperture stops to compare. First, pick your lenses. Let's say I want to compare the widest ones, so I'll keep the Atlas 32mm here uh, wide open. On the right, I want the Lomo Photon 37-140 at 37mm, also wide open at T4.5. And on the bottom left, I want the Surrey 24mm, so let's go down here and find it. Surrey 24mm 
Again, we have to change the aperture f2.8. And on the corner, right bottom, I want the phase in 28 mil, t2.2. Every time you make a selection of lens and aperture, you will see that the video change. And just looking at this grid, you'll notice our exposure is not perfectly matched. We tried our best, but that's part of the on a budget aspect of the test. As tempting as it might be to just hit play on any of these videos, uh, please don't. At the bottom, you'll find our control menus and just hitting play here will start them off with sync. If you started them off wrong or if they took a moment to load, you can just select this jump to and click on it. And you can easily jump to specific times and selections. Now, as they're off sync a little bit, I'm just gonna jump back to real world test to resync everyone. The real world test isn't really real world as we're in a studio with various lights, but we'll go through various motions with each lens, looking at my handsome face and multiple angles, panning and tilting to look at distortion, rack focusing, and so on. The action line at the top always tells you where you are at the test and useful lens info. You can also check lens flares, a distortion chart, and a resolution chart provided by Duclos Lenses. The introductory card for each section outlines all the specs used in the test. So if you want that exact info, just hit pause and that'll pause all the videos at once. The last button in the menu is to go full screen. And that works best on 16 by nine screens, which makes comparing all the videos easier. A few things are not obvious. You'll see a lot of vignetting on pretty much all the tests. That's because we decided to film the entire thing using full frame and let you decide if a lens's image circle is big enough for your purposes or not. And also how the edges of that image circle look. The rulers on each side of the video are millimeter equivalents to sensor size. And here we have the height and here is width to work out that image circle size. You also have a light outline in the center of the frame showing what you get with a Super 35 full aperture crop. And that is 24 millimeters by 18 millimeters. All the videos are in a 16 by nine aspect ratio instead of widescreen aspect ratios. And that decision came from using the full sensor on the Zcam E2 F6 and dealing with various different stretch factors for consistent delivery. 16 by nine allows for easier comparing. And in our chosen scenario here, you will see that the Suray and Vase videos are different in height and they're also different from the Atlas and Lomo right above as well. Last, as I know these are small windows regardless of monitor size, you can still click on individual videos and pixel peep all you want at 4K directly on YouTube. I know the test has flaws and I know there are already lots of lenses missing in it from last year alone. Developing and publishing this thing has been a big challenge and I'm very happy for being able to do it. Later on, I plan on adding the missing lenses, but that'll take a bit of time, so stay tuned. I hope you find useful info with this tool and that you learned something here today. See you on the next one. Chitta Fahadangs, out.